Hello everyone, thank you uh, for joining today's webinar. Uh, welcome to each one of you. Today we'll be doing uh, a webinar on technical analysis. My name is Vivian and I'll be your uh, uh, guide today on technical analysis. Today the topic that we are looking at is to identify trends and manage risks with top trading tools. Now technical analysis has uh, quite a bit of tools that uh, are available in the market that you can use. We'll be going through few of the technical tools that you can start using. Uh, also, while I'm doing this session, uh, while uh, I do the introduction, please feel free to write if you are already uh, well versed in technical analysis or if you're a very new beginner so that I will try and keep uh, the explanation as simple as possible. So it is uh, uh, it uh, will add value to an uh, experienced trader. At the same time, if you're very new to it, I don't want you to miss out on the uh, on the essence of all the topics that we're going to be uh, covering today. All right, so let's uh, start off the session for today. So let's understand what technical analysis is. So uh, basically there are two major analysis that uh, investors and traders do. Uh, it depends on uh, the time frame of investment and the investment objective an investor has as well. Now let's look at someone who is a uh, 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 investor who's looking for a longer time frame uh, is looking at a return for a longer perspective. And I say long term, it could uh, range anywhere between uh, two to five years. Uh, he would uh, more be looking into fundamental analysis. So fundamental analysis basically covers all the fundamentals of a company. Let's take an example of uh, Apple as a company. Uh, what a long-term investor would do is he would look at the valuations of the stock. He would go through the financials and see the revenue uh, that the company has been generating over last couple of years. And he uses all of these details and uh, very importantly, the products and the management of uh, the company. The, the management is also key how they utilize the capital to grow the business. At the same time, the products that they sell, how innovative uh, these products could be and uh, how fruitful it would be even in the future. So looking at all of these aspects, uh, they come under tech, uh, fundamental analysis. Now, on the other hand, technical analysis, basically people who are more towards a short term, of course, even a long term uh, investor can uh, and uh, will be using technical analysis, uh, but it will be on a very long term horizon. But when you look at a short term trading, uh, technical analysis plays a very key role, especially if you are looking to do an intraday trade or very short term momentum based trade. Uh, technical uh, analysis plays a very important role over there. Now, technical analysis in uh, very simple words, basically, it is the price action that you see on the charts. Uh, let's say you're looking at any uh, XYZ company, you try and identify how the price cycle moves. Now you will notice that uh, probably this particular stock, uh, for example, moves up by, uh, let's say it's trading at $100 and it moves up to 120 over a period of time. And then eventually uh, when you do the analysis for, let's say for the last uh, couple of months, you will see every time it comes back towards 105, it picks back up and goes towards 120 again. Now, if you see the same repetition that is happening on this particular price, now, this is known as support in technical analysis. Now, there, uh, there is a price action that people are looking at. Psychology plays an important role as well in uh, technical analysis. And uh, you see the demand coming back at 105 in this example. And every time it goes towards 120, you see uh, the prices drop back again. This is just a scenario that I've given you. Let's look at similar uh, price actions on live charts as well. Now. Basically, uh, a lot of people use uh, the technical uh, tools uh, to identify the supports and resistance to enter the market and exit. Especially when you're looking at a short term time frame, you'll try and uh, identify technical uh, levels for you to enter and exit. Now, there are a couple of uh, uh, topics that we'll be covering today. So before we get into those topics, let's look at the basic reading of a chart. Now, the most basic one is the line chart. Basically, the line chart represents every day's closing and the line uh, is plotted accordingly. Uh, whereas a, a more advanced uh, chart that people uh, use nowadays is the candlestick chart. 
Now, candlestick, basically, I am sure most of you all have seen charts uh, on uh, trading and you see charts on probably all the investment uh, websites and news channels. Now, a candlestick uh, is usually uh, represented uh, for each time frame. In this example, let's look at, we are looking at a daily uh, chart. So each candle will represent the daily uh, uh, price movement. Now, let's say, for example, if it's a green candle, uh, the candle has uh, four things that you can look at. It has a body which represents the open, uh, where the price opened and where the price closed. Now, if the open was on the lower end and it closed on the higher end, it makes it a green candle. Hence, it's a positive candle for the day because we are looking at a daily time frame. Now, uh, during the day, probably uh, after it opened, it made a low and during the day, it actually made a new high as well before the closing. So the low and the high always is represented by a tail or a wick, uh, wick uh, because it's a candle. Now, opposite for if it's a negative day, the price opened on the higher end and you see the price is closing lower, it becomes a red color candle. Now, uh, in this particular example, I said we are looking at a daily candlestick. But it depends on what time frame you choose. If you're choosing, if you change from a daily time frame and you choose, let's say, a five minute uh, time frame, each candlestick will represents the, uh, represent the last five minute move that has happened. I will show you uh, these while we're looking at the live charts as well. Moving forward, support and resistance. In the example that I gave you on the stock uh, where I mentioned that the stock from 100 went to 120, and then it came back to 105 and 105 it bounces back again now these are uh, levels which forms the support meaning every time the price comes to a certain level it takes support and bounces back and every time a price goes to a certain level it takes resistance and drops back down hence a uh, lot of technical uh, uh, traders use the language of support and resistance support meaning where a potential bounce back could happen on the price of the uh, underlying. It could be stocks, it could be commodities. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is technical analysis is applicable across all products uh, that is tradable uh, on the markets, irrespective of the geographic uh, location. You can trade on, you can use the same technical uh, analysis on stocks, on bonds, on uh, commodities, uh, on currencies, etc. Now, here uh, is a very simple representation of a support and resistance. Now, not always a uh, support and a resistance would happen at the same price. Now, if it's a trending market, you will always see every time the market moves up by 10%, it probably uh, comes down by 3%. And then again, it moves up and makes a new 10% high from that low. And then again, comes down by 3%. Now, you could also find support and resistance on trending markets. Now I will show you how to identify trends and uh, how to identify support on those trends. This is just an example over here, trade the bounce. So basically buy when the price falls towards the support. So every time you see a support, uh, you could consider buying it. At the same time, every time you uh, see a resistance, you could book the profit. Or if you are uh, taking a short position, uh, meaning you are selling the, uh, uh, instrument to make a uh, profit when the market prices drop, you can take a short position on a resistance as well. Moving forward, plotting support and resistance. A uh, few key rules that every uh, trader should keep in mind while plotting support and resistance is a support or a resistance becomes a valid or a strong support and resistance on the number of time it visits that same particular price. Let's take a look at, uh, it's, it also is known as testing those price levels. So let's look at this particular uh, example over here. Uh, we see the prices moved up to a certain level, then it drops, it went up again, it drops there from there again. It came back to the same level, dropped back down again. It came back again over here, drops back down again. Now, because there are more than two to three times that has taken resistance, hence this particular area, becomes a key resistance point for this particular instrument. Now, every time similar happens on the lower level, you see it has uh, come down, bounced back up, come down to the same level, bounced back up, come back to the same level, bounce back up, and this is the fourth time you find key support levels where you can potentially enter the trade. 
now on a trending market now uh, it could either be a uptrend or it could be a downtrend in the market now let's say in the case where uh, it's a downtrend in the market you will always see the charts making lower lows meaning the downside is more than the recovery on the upside again you see the downside is uh, much further down than the recovery on the upside so every time you see a lower low it is sloping down hence the trend is made then you can plot your support and resistance similarly to what we saw here horizontally you could pretty much plot similar but now on a trending market now here is a downtrend same rules apply applies over here a trend is uh, known to be strong or the resistance on the trend is known to be strong if it touches multiple points in this case one two three four so there are four points that has touched so minimum that you need to look at is a three point touch so it uh, valid uh, it validates the trend or the support or the resistance uh, similarly on the upside if the market is moving higher now you will see the markets are making higher lows meaning every time it comes down it is coming down uh, higher than the previous low hence it's known as higher low but at the same time every time it goes back up it is making a new high or higher highs so this again becomes a very cl uh, clear trend in, uh, in terms of the uptrend and you plot your support and resistance on an uptrend by connecting all the lows you plot your downtrend by connecting all your highs over here all your lows and here we have another example of a sideway market now a sideway market would be an ideal scenario for everybody to buy and sell but unfortunately that is not always the case uh, markets are always trending it's either trending upward or it's either trending downward there could be a phase where the market is indecisive that is where market goes on a sideway move any questions so far please feel free to uh, write in the q and a section i will try and answer as much as possible uh, before the session ends i hope uh, so far everyone's clear on the support and resistance uh, if you are clear just give me a thumbs up i'll move on to the next topic all right so now uh, coming to one of a very interesting technical tool that is available for uh, technical traders or technical investors is uh, fibonacci now uh, let's just run through basics of what fibonacci is i'm sure most of you all have already covered this uh, in your school or your college days but uh, let's just uh, go through what it is so fibonacci is nothing but a sequence or a series of numbers starting with 0 and 1 so if you just add your first two numbers uh, meaning 0 plus 1 you get 1 you add 1 plus 1 you get 2 1 plus 2 3 2 plus 3 5 3 plus 5 8 5 plus 8 13 and so on to infinite now this is basically known as the fib uh, series and that's how the fib uh, numbers are formed now let's look at few facts of uh, Fibonacci. Basically, Fibonacci is also known as the golden ratio. I will explain to you how a uh, golden ratio works. Uh, patterns such as spirals of shells, curve of waves, uh, trees, plants, all of these have these Fibonacci uh, series of numbers in it. Uh, the fact that the things as large as spirals of galaxies and a small LDA molecule follow the golden ratio suggests that Fibonacci sequence is one of the most fundamental characteristics in the universe. Now, uh, basically, uh, the entire universe, everything that we look at has the Fibonacci series uh, in it. And uh, the idea is if it appears everywhere in life, uh, let's uh, apply the same on uh, the stock market or uh, the charts and see if it appears there as well. So that was the concept on uh, Fibonacci, where Fibonacci has been very widely used uh, in the markets. <coughs> Here are a few examples uh, where you see Fibonacci in a geometrical representation. You see that each square, so basically each square represents the series of numbers that we just saw. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 5. So you can see over here, it starts with 1, 2, 3, 5, 8 plus 13, 21, 13 plus 21, 34, and it goes on. So you see that each square fits neatly into each other. 
uh, in this case, for example, if you take five and eight, it makes 13. So you add five and eight, it gives you the square of 13. And if you connect all the corners of these uh, squares, you get a spiral. Now, why the spiral is significant, I will show you as well. On the other hand, if you look at any tree or plants, if you have at home, uh, you could probably uh, count how many leaves are there on each of the stems. Most likely it has to be end with a Fibonacci number. Uh, that is also very interesting that you can practically uh, do and test it out yourself. I would uh, encourage you all uh, do more research on Fibonacci, uh, how it appears in the universe. It's a very uh, interesting topic. I'm sure you will get a lot more examples than what I'm sharing here. So there is Fibonacci even in the sunflower. Uh, so if you can look at all these spirals, basically these spirals uh, form these same numbers again. Now moving forward, now you can look at the entire galaxy. Can you see Fibonacci here? There we go. So there is Fibonacci even in the entire galaxy, the way it has been formed, right? Now coming to the golden ratio, why Fibonacci is known as the golden ratio? Uh, very simple. You take any of the series from the number. <coughs> Let's just go back to the series. Yep. You take, uh, for example, let's say you take 89 divided by 144 multiplied by 100, you get 61.8. You take a bigger number, 28,657 divided by 46,368 multiplied by 100, you get 61.8. So basically, irrespective of where in the series uh, you are, if you take your first number and divide it by the second number, you get 61.8. So hence, uh, it is known as the golden ratio. Now, let's come back to the slide. Okay, 61.8 uh, is found by dividing one number in the series by the number that follows it. For example, 8 divided by 13, you get 0 0.1615 uh, uh, because it's a smaller number, but as you go higher, it gets to 0 0.618 multiplied by 100, you get 61.8. Now, let's look at uh, how it's plotted on the charts and how it is utilized uh, on the charts of course now we cannot use the fibonacci series number itself although a lot of people uh, do use uh, fibonacci numbers when they are checking the number of days or uh, the cycle or uh, the uptrend has made uh, how many days was it on an uptrend uh, if it ends with a fibonacci number they do their calculation based on those numbers but in terms of uh, our profit and loss uh, what we are most interested is in when we can buy and when you can sell, when to invest, when not to invest, where you can potentially keep your take profits and where to keep your stop losses. Now, this is where Fibonacci will help you. Now, since we are not looking at uh, the numbers and we're looking at the ratio, which is 61.8. Now, how do you measure ratio? You me measure the ratio by the length. Let's say, for example, in this particular example, you see a rally began on Apple. Uh, this I have taken back in the uh, year's data so that uh, we see the similar pattern appearing every year, every time we see a drop, for example. In this case, you see a, a rally, basically a trend that has picked up. Now the trend for whatever reason ends over here. Now once the trend has ended and you have three to uh, four red candles, now you understand that the trend has reversed and it is coming back down. Now. Uh, how would you use Fibonacci in this? You measure this rally. Uh, you get your Fibonacci uh, tool in your uh, uh, draw, draw tools on the platform that I'm showing you, but most of them have Fibonacci, even if you're looking at it on uh, any public websites as well. Now, how do you draw Fibonacci? You choose the starting point of the rally and to the ending point of the rally. <coughs> and we see that it is a 100% move. Why we consider it a 100% move is because the rally began here and the rally ended here. Now in this 100% move, the market starts dropping back down again and <clears throat> it takes support and starts bouncing back up. This happened in 2016. You see the drop happening in 2015. In 2016, it takes a support and starts bouncing back up. Now using just Fibonacci without any fundamentals, Let's look at where it came. I'm sorry, I think uh, the chart is a little blurred out. I will show you the same on the live chart as well. 
you see it has taken support here at 61.8. There are other Fibonacci numbers as well apart from 61.8, but 61.8 is the golden ratio. Uh, so let's just focus on 61.8 for now. Uh, you see it bounces back up in 2016 and starts making a new high. Now, if you are an investor or if you were looking to buy a particular uh, product uh, at a discounted price, this would have been the ideal price. Now, the challenge that most people face is when the market is rallying, sometimes we might have missed the opportunity to buy it. But the next dilemma is when do we actually enter? Do we end up buying at the high price? Of course, that would be uh, quite dangerous if anybody had to buy right at the top and then it drops, you're looking at a loss. But ideal scenario would, it, would be is when it drops to buy it at a certain level. Now, how do we identify these certain levels? Now, we looked at uh, trend lines, we looked at support resistance. Now, apart from that, if you draw your uh, Fibonacci, Fibonacci also gives you a support and resistance. 61.8 being the golden ratio would be a stronger support. And in this case, it bounced back from 61.8. Now let's look at 2016, this is where it started bouncing back up and that means a new trend has been formed. Now, a couple of years later, you see markets has bounced up and then two, three red candles, you understand the market is reversing. That means your uptrend is over now. There's a downtrend that has begun. So you measure from where the rally began again to where it ended. Now in this case, again, it drops back around 2018 and 2019 beginning before it bounces back up. In this case, you see it uh, dropped again to 61.8 before it started bouncing back up. Moving forward now, 2019, it bounced back up. So you see the market rallied, it stopped, it made a reversal. Again, you measure low where the trend began to where it ended. You see again, it drops to a certain level before it bounces back up again it is 61.8 now as magical as it may look it is not always the case uh so there are cases where it can go below 61.8 breach the entire uh up rally and starts making a new low now this is where risk management is the key for successful trading and investment now however how many ever times apple has done this in the past and even if it has given you 10 out of 10 trades with a hit ratio of 100%, you still need to have risk management because uh, if it goes against you and there is no proper risk management in place, you might end up losing all the profits that you have gained. Uh, at the same time, risk management is always key to minimize your risk and use the capital to reinvest back again in the next opportunity that you would see than getting stuck in one trade and waiting for that to recover. And probably if the, although it does not make you a big loss, but even if uh, at the same time, if it never recovers, you're still stuck in that particular trade. I will show you how to do, uh, how to use Fibonacci to use risk as well, uh, to manage your risk as well. Now, uh, the other uh, most commonly used uh, indicator is uh, moving averages, now I'm sure most of you all have heard of moving averages. Basically, it helps you smoothen and simplify price fluctuations. Uh, basically, you look at trend lines to find support and resistance. Now, what happens with the moving averages? A moving average gives you a much better support and resistance, not exactly uh, how a trend line would look but it shows you every time the average price of a particular product that you're trading on comes in, that could be a potential area to buy or to sell. Now, while moving averages are very useful, uh, we need to be aware that they do not predict future movement. Maybe a moving average is showing an uptrend that does not necessarily mean the uptrend would continue. There could be a, a reversal in the market, but we can always use the moving average to understand where you could see potential opportunities at the same time, like I mentioned, with proper good risk management in place. Now let's look at uh, the most uh, uh, simple moving average. Back in the days when there were no computers, people used simple moving average. I'm sure most of you know how to calculate averages. Now in this case, we are looking at a three-day period. Now this three-day could be, let's say, last three days candlestick. 
and we are looking at the closing price only you could use the open price you could use the mid price you can use the high price but most commonly used is the close price now let's say uh three days back uh in this particular example the stock closed at 50 the next day it closed at 45 <coughs> and yesterday it closed at 60. now we have three days we need to find the average of this i'm sure most of you all know how to do the moving average uh you just add up all the three prices and you divide it by three you get your average price, which is 51. Now 51 is the moving average for the last three days. Now let's say tomorrow uh, it closes at 70. It will calculate from 45, 60 and 70 and the last, whichever uh, was at the end will not be counted anymore because we are looking at only three day moving average. Now you can look at a three day moving average. You can look at a 50 day moving average. You can look at a 100 day moving average. You can look at a 200 to 500 day moving average. The longer the time frame, the stronger the price uh, support or the resistance would be. I will show you that as well in my example on the live charts. Any questions so far, please uh, do uh, put it in the chat. Uh, before I uh, move forward, please uh, let me know if everything is fine so far. Or if you would want me to repeat on any particular topic again. All right, moving forward. Now let's look at WMA, which is another moving average, but this time it is a weighted moving average. Same three periods, but we're going to add weights to it. The, the most uh, latest one will get the highest weightage because we're looking at the three day moving average. Middle one will get the average weightage and the uh, the last one or the most extreme uh, one that we're looking at will get the least average. Now, if you add one, two, and three, you get you divide it by six, you get 53.33. Now, this is known as the weighted moving average. Now, why uh, was weighted moving average uh, uh, used uh, instead of uh, SMA? Now, you can notice that SMA basically gives you a support or a price level of 51.66. Whereas a weighted average is giving you a price of 53.33 because the more uh, closer to the day we are, it has higher weightage. So hence the price will always of a move, uh, weighted moving average will be always more closer to where the particular stock or the commodity or currency is trading at. So a lot of uh, short term traders use a weighted moving average to gain a uh, uh entry points in the market whereas sma is a slower moving uh where it would give you a more smoother and a more longer term view uh for a short term trader wma is what he uses wma basically like i said it adds weight to it the most recent price that has the highest weight so it shows you where the momentum is the most ema is part of similar to weighted moving average except the calculation on EMA considers few more criteria, but it acts exactly as uh, how a weighted moving average acts. Now, these are the three moving averages. Basically, the main difference between a simple moving average, SMA, weighted moving average, WMA, and exponential moving average, which is EMA, is the sensitivity that it has uh, and shows to the changes in the markets, in the prices that are being used. SMA calculates the average price, while WMA gives more weight to the current data or to the current closing prices. Now, like I said, current closing prices could be for last three days. You could test it out for last 10 days, 100 days or 200 days. EMA, again, now pretty much same as uh, WMA. It has more a few more criteria, hence it can give you a little more uh, momentum. Uh, and it's more uh, constant, I mean, it's more exponential in its uh, nature. Let's look at an example on the chart. I'm looking at a 30 minute chart on NASDAQ. Now, this is a SMA, simple moving average, which is at 14,365 for 30 minutes. Now, I'm looking at a 50 period now because i'm looking at a 30 minute chart is not a 50 uh, day moving average it 
calculates the previous 50 candlesticks. If I was looking at a daily chart, it'll calculate the last 50 candlesticks, which is last 50 days. If I'm looking at 30 minutes, it'll look at last 50, 30 minutes that has happened and gives me an average. So this is how a simple moving average looks. Whereas this is how a uh, weighted average moving, uh, movement uh, average uh, looks. Now, similarly, if you notice it, this is also a 50 day weighted moving average. If you notice, it is more closer to the price where it is trading currently. So hence for a short term trader, they would uh, look at a WMA or a EMA uh, because it will give them more opportunities and it gives them a quicker indication of the trend because it gives more weightage to the last uh, few prices uh, rather than a SMA. SMA is more smoother. It takes time to give you a trend, but whereas a WMA or EMA in this case, the purple line represents the EMA, if you notice, is pretty much in tandem with WMA. Now, <clears throat> golden cross. So there is something known as golden cross and death cross in uh, moving average. Uh, especially people who look at daily charts, they uh, use this to identify if the market is in a bullish uh, market or a bearish market. Bullish meaning the market is on an uptrend or it has come back onto an uptrend uh, or they use this as a second indication to identify if the market is on an uptrend or a downtrend. Now, golden cross is for uptrend. Uh, death cross is the opposite. It's for the downtrend. Now, <clears throat> golden uh, cross usually uses uh, two SMS. One is a 50 day moving average uh, comb with a combination of 200 day moving average. Now, every time the short term moving average, every time you look at a shorter term, it has more uh, more uh, momentum in it when compared to a long term uh, chart, uh, sorry, long term moving average. I will show you that in an example here. Now, let's look at an example for golden cross and a death cross. Now, in this particular example, I've taken uh, all the way from last year, you see, uh, sorry, all the way from 2020, you see the market, the yellow line represents the 50 day moving average. In this case, we have taken the SMA and the red line represents the 200 day moving average. Now let's just look at visually what happens every time the shorter term moving average crosses over the longer term moving average. In this case, it crossed below the longer term, shorter term, the yellow line, 50 day moving average, moved below 200 day moving average. And you see the market has gone into a bearish scenario. And eventually when the uh, price, when the 50 day moving average moved back, above the 200 day moving average, you see the market has continued the bullish scenario. This again for the year, it had crossed below the 200 day moving average, hence creating a bearish scenario. And currently it has bounced back up above the uh, 200 day moving average, hence creating an uptrend uh, in the market. This is, SPX again on a daily chart with little more uh, zoomed in view. This is the basic, uh, basically we are looking at this particular uh, last move that has happened. You see the 50 day moving average has crossed above the 200 day moving average. This is the golden crossover. And hence you can expect the markets to trend upside. Now I will show you how you can use this to trade uh, or to invest in the long term markets. Uh, so far, if you all have any questions on moving average, please feel free to ask me. All right, so let's uh, move into the live charts. Uh, let me just share my screen. Are you all able to see my uh, screen here? Please let me know if you can see my screen and I will resume the session.
All right. So let's look at Apple on moving average, or let's look at SPX since we were looking that as an example here. So I'm looking at a daily chart. I'm looking at the candlestick. I, you can also change your candlestick to a line chart. This shows you the line chart. Candlesticks most preferred. Let's start with uh, the moving averages and then I will also show you how to use Fibonacci. Uh, and let's see how each one fits in well over here. Technicals, I'm going to choose SME. Now in this case, let me make the fonts a little bigger. Perfect. So I'm looking at a 50 day moving average, the yellow line here. Right. And for the golden crossover, I would need a 200 day. So I'm looking at a 200 length period. Done. Let me change the color. So we understand red represents 200 day moving average. Make it a little thicker and yellow represents the 50 day moving average. Now, if you see how the crossover has happened, now, ideally, investors look at these crossover to get a double confirmation on uh, whether to buy in the market or to sell in the market. Now, in this case, this would be a good confirmation that the trend from a downtrend now has started an uptrend in the market. So there is still opportunity for investors to look into if they want to invest in the market. However, uh, please note that uh, moving averages are always lagging indicators. So there could be potential uh, miss on getting the entries right at the bottom. But then we can use other tools uh, as well to identify where an entry point is and then also get a confirmation on your moving averages. Now let's just look at a single moving average, a 200 day moving average which acts as a support and resistance. Uh, now you see every time it is below the moving average, it acts as a resistance. And every time it is above the moving average, it acts as a support. So a lot of people use just the moving average, especially a longer time frame moving average to identify support and resistance to enter and exit. Now, if you're looking at a daily chart, a 200 day and a 50 day moving average would uh, be ideal if you're looking at a smaller time frame. Let's say you're looking at a 30 minute time frame. Now you could reduce your parameters to 50 and probably a 15 day moving average to identify similar golden ratios. I'll just make this bigger. Now let's look at today's move or in the last couple of uh, days, the move that has happened. Uh, the market tried, basically the yellow line represents the shorter term, which is 15 days and the 50 days moving average is the red line. Now, uh, every time the yellow line crosses over above the longer time frame, that is uh, the 50 day moving average, it means the trend could be bullish, meaning the uptrend has uh, started. So you could potentially take a buy and vice versa. Every time it breaks below you can expect the prices to drop. So let's look at a few other examples in the past. This was on uh, 23rd of uh, May. You see the crossover happened below. There was a crossover below over here as well. It crossed back up. Again, it crossed back down. Now I'll show you in terms of execution and practicality as to how to apply these moving averages and how to manage your risk reward. Let's just take uh, this as an example. Now let's look at uh, this particular area where it dropped down first initially. So you took a sell position expecting it to drop further to gain from it, but it eventually crossed back up. What would you do in a scenario like that? Now this is where your risk management is key. Let's look at how a trader or an investor would look at this and manage his risk. Uh, please note that all the recommendations and all uh, all that I'm showing you here is not a recommendation. 
is just used for illustrative purpose. Uh, it depends on each client's objectives and uh, uh, the investment strategy that you have for your portfolio. So do not replicate this as it is uh, because it differs. Every client has different time frames, different uh, expectation, different risk appetite. So accordingly, uh, you would uh, be uh, advised to take a trade once you consult a professional before taking the trade. Now let's look at uh, SPX for example. Now in this case, we are looking to short the market. Maybe there was a crossover here, right? So we expect now because it crossed over, we expect the prices to drop. <coughs> now on the downside, the more it comes down, the more profit we make. Let's say we take 10 units, we sell it at 4190. If the prices drop to 4133, you make $500 profit, which is a good profit. <clears throat> but how do we manage your risk? You always manage your risk by keeping a stop loss. Now, there are various levels that you can look to keep a stop loss. Uh, you can keep it far away based on certain criteria. You can keep it as close as possible based on certain criteria. The most advisable stop loss would always be away from the previous high in this case. So you would keep a stop loss above this, meaning if this was a false break and the market continues to trend upside, you get stopped out at the close to the previous high. Whereas in this case, it came <clears throat> on the upside, but then did not sustain and eventually dropped. Hence you would have gained on the downside. Now take profit. Again, if you're risking about $250, you should have a minimum criteria of double the risk uh, of uh, double uh, the amount of the risk that you're taking. If you're taking a risk up to $50, you should ideally look to make at least a $500 gain. And hence you can keep a stop, uh, take profit of $500. Now let's look at on the reversal side. Now there was a crossover that happened on the upside here. Right, so you see a crossover beginning at this level here. So let's assume you took a buy in this case. Let's say same 10 units. You take a buy at the crossover. So it crossed over somewhere here, roughly somewhere here. Now your stop loss becomes very easy. You keep it below the previous low. So in the case, this was a false crossover and the market eventually starts dropping and could drop much more steeper. You get stopped out over here, which is a rough uh, stop loss of almost $400. And on the upside, you can keep a take profit of $800. In this case, if you had to take a buy somewhere here, markets came up, you would have gained $800 for a risk of $400. Now, of course, uh, every... <clears throat> rally and drop might have different uh, length it could move up to but if you want to keep a consistent stop loss and take profit like let's say the previous one had 250 dollar stop loss uh, for a ta target of 500 dollars uh, so one is to two and you want a similar uh, impact even on this particular trade you can always reduce your exposure let's say if you had to do uh, maybe five units you're risking about 200 dollars to make 400 dollars or let's say you had to do about 6.5 units, you risk about $250 to make about $500. So your levels do not change, but your investment exposure uh, can always be uh, altered depending on your level of entry, where you keep your stop loss, where you keep your take profit. Let's look at, <clears throat> uh, do you all want me to uh, elaborate more on support and stop, uh, support and resistance on moving averages? Uh, please let me know. We have another 10-15 minutes more. Uh, in the meanwhile, if you have any questions, please uh, do write in the chat for the moving averages or if you want to understand the entry and exit using moving averages. Uh, in, I will move on to how to use Fibonacci now. Now let's look at Fibonacci, the 61.8 golden ratio. I will show you an apple that we saw live. Unfortunately, the uh, the charts were a bit blurred out. So let me just show you how Apple would have looked on a live chart. 
so in your draw tools you get fibonacci as i mentioned every uh, you always measure your fibonacci from where the trend began and where eventually where it ends so in this case you see the trend began here it ended over here let me zoom that in for you so just trying to make it bigger zoom this right oh, i'm sorry i think that's the max i can zoom over here so you see it came down to 61.8 let me make these forms a little bigger and remove the other values yeah. right so you see it came down till 61.8 before it starts bouncing back up large fonts i think yeah this should give a better picture now you see there was another rally that began over here from here to here and then you see again a 61.8 now this was the last huge rally that has happened okay so there was one drop here it did not come to 61.8 hence there was no opportunity to enter then you see the market again trending back up over here for a short period it comes back down in this case it came back to 61.8 now you could enter on this 61.8 eventually there was a bigger rally which continued which has breached 61.8 nevertheless it has bounced back quite a number of times if you can look at this the close price or the open price has most of the time been above 61.8 now again i'm not saying every 61.8 is a trading opportunity please always uh, do consider a couple of other indicators to give you uh, similar signals so that you have two to three different signals which is giving you a double confirmation or a triple confirmation before you take any investment or trading uh, uh, decision now let's look at on the reversal side it has gone to 61.8 here and then you see a drop now the market is still trending hence i cannot uh, put the end point here till i see a reversal so a new trend has begun on nasdaq uh, sorry on apple here but the end point could be here or it could be higher maybe here or it could be even more higher now till i see a reversal for example let's assume that a reversal would happen from this level so in this case market has gone till here and then i start seeing a reversal happen now this is where i'm going to use my fibonacci now i'm going to measure once the reversal has happened like i said at least 2 to 3 red candle to confirm the reversal i can use fibonacci to measure this point to this point to see where i can buy back into apple that will be at 61.8 of this particular rally so i hope you are clear on uh, this let's just look at one more example for uh, uh, the fibonacci before we close for the day and i will also show you how to use fibonacci to keep your stop losses and uh, pay profit let's look at nasdaq again i'm showing you a very long time frame because it's more neater and cleaner you can use you can apply the same on even a 5 minute chart let me just show a 5 minute chart you see trends even within a 5 minute chart you can see there was a quick rally here and then it dropped it came back took support close to 61.8 and bounced back up so if you are a short term trader you would probably looking at taking a buy here i'll show you how to keep a stop loss and take profit for these trades uh let's look at uh, another rally that happened here there was a rally so it came back down downtrend the uptrend was broken it came down you took a buy at 61.8 in this case it came down hit your stop loss you are out of the trade so like i said 61.8 not does not always uh, necessarily have to have a bounce back up from there 
majority of times it does but not always the case and hence your risk management is very very crucial now let's look at a downward market the reverse so i would look at a downtrend i measure the trend where it began and where it closed now in this case let's look at the reverse of the trade now in this case you see a market crashed and it has taken resistance at 61.8 now in this case if you take a short position you can take a sell here and expect it to drop back down to your 61.8 that becomes your take profit let's just show an example on this trade before we close trade on the chart this is a very this is a 5 minute time frame so it's going to be a very quick uh, momentum based trade uh, i would advise not to do this if you are not an experienced trader because uh, short term moments are very volatile and very sensitive to uh, any uh, news that might come up so hence a uh, stop loss definitely is very highly recommended and so i'm just going to add few other fibonacci numbers uh, which are usually used now there is 88.6 uh, there is 78.6 there is 38.2 Let's just uh, look at 88.6 and 61.8. If you enter on 61.8, it is always crucial to keep a stop loss. So let me just zoom that in. Sorry. Yep. So you're entering at 61.8, the orange line. Your stop loss is at 88.6. Now your take profit basically will come back at 61.8 on the lower end now let's look at the risk reward for this if you had to buy 10 units you risk about 200 dollars to make about 300 dollars not a very great risk reward trade but nevertheless your logics uh, in terms of entering and exit are pretty much clear and it makes it simple for you to identify your entry and exit point uh, let me just show you one last example on a weekly chart or a monthly chart with same 61.8 as your uh, guidance now you notice that there was a rally that happened here and a drop and then from here there has been a significant rally you could always look at Haikanashi which shows you trends so I prefer using Haikanashi because it shows you clear trends now in this trend you notice that the market rallied and then eventually it dropped and it took support on 61.8 now since i'm looking at a monthly time frame i'm not doing a very short term uh, momentum based trade rather i'm looking at a very uh, long term or a high, a longer duration uh, investment trade in this case uh, it gave me a price at 61.8 that is roughly around 10500 let's look at if you had to buy at 61.8 here okay and your target will be reverse so basically you're now measuring the drop this would be your target oops i'm sorry as of today the price is trading at the target so anyone who bought it at this price would have gained about four thousand dollars so if you had to buy one unit you would have gained about four thousand dollars if you had to buy 10 units you would have gained about forty thousand dollars so like i said if it's a longer term investment you would always look at investing a bigger amount than doing a smaller uh, investment now in this case returns wise it is quite attractive uh, so and you're looking at an investment uh, side of it you're looking at us nasdaq nasdaq is the top 100 tech companies of us uh, now the risk management for the same again your stop loss would have been at 88.6 risk reward again twenty five thousand dollars risk to make forty thousand dollars but if you're looking at it on an investment perspective there are two ways that you can do because long term if you look at the charts the markets have always eventually gone back up now if you want to avoid uh, a close out because now you're looking at a long term perspective you could always keep a stop loss slightly further away your risk reward is one is to one 
The other way you can do it is you instead of buying 10 units, one shot, you buy only one, uh, one time, uh, which is about five units. And if the price comes towards 88.6, you add another five units to buy to it. <coughs> and then keep a stop loss below the 100%. So this way uh, you would gain much more because your average price would be somewhere here. And when you have about 10 units and the prices move back up, let's say in this case, the price would move back up from here till 61.8 or 88.6 on the higher end, you still make about uh, $65,000 on the upside and your risk reduces. Now, uh, why Fibonacci uh, is one of the tools that you should uh, look at, in, uh, including in your trading uh, or decision making cycle, is because it gives you unbiased uh, levels. So you're just measuring the rally or the drop, and these levels 61.8. And uh, since it's a golden ratio, you can always uh, look at a crucial level. Uh, one more way to think about it is let's say you are an investor who wanted to buy into nasdaq but you miss the opportunity now like how we do shopping we uh, probably want to buy something but we wait for a discount in the price to buy that particular investment right or uh, the particular product similarly the markets the price would have made a rally you wait for a discount and when the prices drop it gives you a discount on that rally and then you buy on that discount and that discount is where you can use Fibonacci to measure. Now you can have all your other levels put into Fibonacci, uh, 23.6, 38.6. Now you got your 61.8 by dividing your first number with the second number. If you divide your first number with your third number, you get 38.2 and hence the other uh, uh, Fibonacci numbers has been derived from these numbers. Now I'm just adding all of the Fibonacci uh, levels now let's look at each level now this is broken down 61.8 38.2 and uh, 23.6 now let's look at the same fibonacci but on a daily time frame now this gives you if you are a medium term trader like let's say a weekly trader this would act as support and resistance for you by default now let's say you look at even more shorter time frame. Let's say you look at a 30 minute time frame. Now, 30 minute time frame, uh, let's make it two hours so I can zoom out a bit. On 30 minute time frame, also I can see a resistance here, quite strong one, based on the Fibonacci that I looked at on a weekly time frame. Right? So, Fibonacci always gives you an unbiased support and resistance. So hence, it's uh, recommended that you use Fibonacci as one of your uh, technical tool while making investment or trading decisions. Uh, thank you all again for joining me for this session. I hope it was informative and I hope uh, you would learn something new if, if you are already an experienced investor or trader. If you were very new, I hope uh, uh, whatever I have explained today was clear for you. Please give me your feedback. Uh, and uh, probably we can meet. If you come by to the office, we can always have a one-on-one -on -one session. Please get in touch with your uh, relationship manager uh, if you need any more advanced session from here. Your feedback would be greatly appreciated. Uh, it'll help me to improvise on my presentation as well as my delivery of presentation to you. Thank you so much. Uh, have a good day and hope to see you all again soon. Thank you.